Hello and welcome to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I founded Oxford Clay, an eco-conscious pottery company. So on this podcast, we're gonna be talking about all things pottery related, often with an eco-conscious twist, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go. Hi, so in this episode, we're going to be talking about plant ash glazing. Um, which is such a cool thing to do in pottery. And so I'm gonna tell you all about it, what it is and um, you know why it's such a great thing for potters to do and um, some of my like top tips uh, for plant ash glazing. Okay, so what on earth is plant ash glazing? <laughs> okay, so plant ash glazing is effectively making a pottery glaze from ash. So it's basically, do you know, say like if you had a fire, you burned a load of wood, um, like a bonfire in the garden, and at the end of the fire, there is like a heap of ash. And that effectively is the ash that goes into a plant ash glaze. So this ash basically contains loads of minerals that when they're heated to very high temperatures they melt into a kind of glassy substance that we can use as a pottery glaze. So um, the history of plant ash glazing is really interesting. They So historians think that it first started in the, in the Shang period in China three and a half thousand years ago. And I think what happened was because potters in this region were using a new type of kiln called a cross draft kiln, they were able to get the kiln to like much hotter temperatures than potters have ever been able to get, you know, the kiln temperature before. So because the kilns were fired with wood, uh, what happened was some of this wood, you know, ash like fell onto the pots and then melted in the really high temperatures. So, you know, um, an ash basically needs to get to the temperature of 1170 degrees, at least degrees Celsius, before it actually melts into a kind of glassy substance. So, you know, these potters were able to get their kilns that hot and it melted onto the pots. So it's thought that what happened after that was that because potters noticed, oh, this is kind of making a kind of shiny substance on our pots, what they started doing was actually making glaze by mixing plant ash um, with clay and then applying it onto the outside of pots as kind of like, you know, the world's first kind of glaze. Um, so that's the basically the origins of glazing. So plant ash glazing is, is effectively, you know, the first glaze, pottery glaze ever invented. And that's why it's so cool for potters to practice this. So lots of modern potters, you know, became really kind of interested in ash glazing because it's got such a long, you know, historical tradition. So, you know, it's got its roots in like you know ancient pottery practices and so lots of modern potters you know adopted ash glazing and got really sort of interested in it so for example bernard leach um, a lot of bernard leach's pottery is ash glazed um, and ash glazing was basically practiced you know widely in the um, east asian region so sort of lots of historical pottery in china korea japan thailand you know loads of pottery in that region is glazed with plant ash and there's loads of different kind of um, you know historical kind of techniques that were used um, in this region uh, for really beautiful glazes so there's a glaze called a nuka glaze which is this kind of beautiful creamy white blue glaze which is actually made from um, rice plants like dried rice plants that have been burned um, into an ash and then that ash is then used as a pottery glaze um, so um, so ash glazing is great is a great resource um, 
the reason it's so good for potters to use is you know it's it links you with historical uh you know pottery practices ancient pottery practices um it's very kind of easy to get hold of as a material you know effectively you could be recycling a waste ash product so if you, you know if anyone you know or you uh burns you know you have a wood burning stove um then you can use the ash from your wood burning stove um you know recycle it into a glaze so this you know product that would be like thrown away or you know added to the garden or something can actually be turned into a pottery glaze so there's those reasons another reason is that um along with the minerals in the ash um there are also trace metals which um, are taken up by the plant as the plant grows so this is really cool because it actually adds colour naturally to your pottery glaze without you having to add any kind of like additional colourants like metal oxides or anything like that. So um, what's really cool about it is like each plant, uh, depending on like what the type of plant is and like where it's grown, it will have a different mineral composition in its tissues. And so when the plant is burned, those minerals go to make a unique glaze. So that is like actually also one of the bad things about using an ash glaze. Um, and that's I think why quite a lot of potters like today don't really use ash glazing. And that's because it's quite kind of random <laughs> in like the appearance of the glaze, of the finished glaze. So for example, you could even use, um, you know, the same plant, but because it's growing in slightly different soil, um, it could have a different, slightly different mineral composition and then create a slightly different glaze. So for potters who want, you know, consistency in their work and they want, you know, their, their work to look the same every time, ash glazing can be quite tricky because the ash is basically going to be different every time. So some really cool things I've uh, learned recently about plant ash glazing. So I've actually been, um, I've got really into, <laughs> really into testing different plants. Um, I'm going to produce a book on all these different plants and the, the ashes they make. Um, so um, in my research, what I've found is that so I've, I've found some kind of general themes amongst plants and the ashes they make in terms of like the, the way the glaze looks, the finished glaze when it's fired. Um, so the recipe I've been using is a combination of uh, plant ash and quartz rock and also Cornish stone as well. So there are loads of different plant ash glaze recipes that you can get. Some of them have, you know, quite low levels of plant ash. Some um, have high levels of plant ash. Um, you know, some of the glazes are literally 50% plant ash, 50% clay. But the one I use is um, plant ash, uh, quartz and Cornish stone, which is actually a form of quartz that's artificially degraded. So it's kind of like two types of quartz and the plant ash. Um, and what I found is some really cool stuff which I want to share with you. So, um, so I've been testing loads and loads and loads of different plants and what I found is plants with quite waxy leaves, say like um, an ivy plant in the UK, you've got ivy, there was another plant I tested called Fatsia japonica which has very waxy leaves. Um, I tested some holly leaves as well, very waxy sort of um, evergreen plant leaves and those um, leaves when I burned them actually made a glaze when I mixed them in with the glaze ingredients other glaze ingredients they made glazes which were really creamy white uh, and sort of just beautiful glazes so um, you know I, they were I did them quite thick but they came out as like a really sort of creamy white kind of almost like a bluey type glaze so I'd definitely recommend if you wanted to try you know making your own ash glaze um, I've got loads of resources actually on the Oxford Clay website um, and the ebooks I've got on the Oxford Clay website have um, you know different ash glaze 
recipes in eco-conscious pottery glazing has some ash glaze recipes in there there's also a video course if you wanted to learn how to make um, an ash a plant ash glaze um, there's a video course that takes you through the whole thing you know start to finish absolutely suitable for beginners if you know you want to try making your own plant ash glaze from you know zero knowledge of having that before um, so yeah so I'd really recommend using those plants um, with like you know those very waxy kind of stiff leaves um, they seem to make incredibly nice glazes um, so another batch of glazes that I found are um, ones made with uh, wood ash so this is the more traditional way of making an ash glaze is traditionally with like a hardwood so like you know oak um, ash woods um, you know elm in the UK um, sycamore um, those woods make really beautiful glazes that are very very shiny so I did a glaze just made from sycamore wood and it came out incredibly glassy, <laughs> just literally like, like glass almost. It was so um, shiny and like, you know, clear and shiny. So um, yeah, so those are some general themes. Um, another batch of plants I've been testing actually are grasses. And now I thought, had in my mind before testing them that they would be that they'd come out really nice, they'd be like, oh, you know, grassy, all kind of maybe like a creamy glaze. But these glazes have come out really rough. They've come out with a very, very rough texture and not really melting. So they've been fired to stoneware temperatures, um, so 1,260 degrees, and they still haven't kind of melted into a glassy glaze. It's a very rough glaze. So, you know, if you're looking for a very matte finish on your pots, then you know you can try using um, a glaze made from grass plant ash. Um, yeah, so those are some general themes of plants that I've discovered in my work uh, experimenting with ash glazes. And I hope that's been helpful for you. Um, it's such an exciting world of glazing. You can basically use the same recipe and you can make, you know, hundreds of different, thousands of different glazes just by switching the plant ash you're using. So um, yeah, I absolutely love it. And um, watch out for that book coming soon with loads of different plants. I've tested loads of different plants and you can see, you'll be able to see like photos of them all and stuff. Um, yeah, so enjoy yourself, enjoy, you know, experimenting with your pottery and I'll see you next time. So if you liked that and you're interested in learning more about pottery, eco-conscious pottery, tools and techniques for potters, there's so much for you on the Oxford Clay website. There's blogs, ebooks, e-courses, video courses, and I can't wait to see you there. So the website is www.oxfordclay.co.uk. Mm -hmm.